stopping retainers. I have had this question asked to me many times. People who have found what I'm saying, who have had orthodontics and are still wearing retainers, are asking me whether they could stop wearing their retainers. They realize that the retainer is potentially preventing them gaining more expansion by improving their oral posture and function and of course body posture and function with that. So it's actually acting as a break on further development. Now I must be cautious because it would be negligent of me to recommend anyone stop their retainer wear. If I recommended this, I'm liable for any relapse that may happen. Of course, this could go two ways. You stop your retainer wear and the forces that the control the balance zone, the lip, the cheek and the tongue, and that balance may be tipped in the balance where the tongue loses out and the soft tissues push in, you gain relapse having stopped using your retainer. However, the alternative balance may be that you've tipped the balance in favour of your tongue through a lot of hard work and effort and you will actually get some expansion. And of course, not only expansion, you'll get the dental arch moving up and forwards as well as widening, which is the ideal situation. And of course, the tongue is the ideal orthodontic appliance to do this with. Now, in that situation, the appliance, any retainer, is now acting as a brake on change. So, if you have tipped the balance in the direction of your tongue, and that's a big if, then yeah, you need to get rid of that retainer. The problem is finding out if you've changed the balance or not. Of course, you can cut down your retainer wear and you can see what happens. The idea with retainers is you wear them every night and that will hold the teeth in position. Of course, if you start cutting down wear, you do risk jiggling the teeth. So let's say you cut down to wearing the retainer two nights every week, so the weekends. When you put the retainer in, the teeth feel a bit uncomfortable, but the retainer goes in. If you were to do this all the time, year in, year out, that little bit of discomfort is a reflection of the fact that the teeth have moved in a direction and the retainer is now pulling them back into position. That means the teeth are jiggling backwards and forwards and I, I cannot recommend that. That is negligent. That would cause damage to your teeth. This is moving the teeth backwards and forwards. If you have a stake in the ground and you want to get the stake out of the ground, you wriggle it backwards and forwards and the stake will come out and the same thing will happen to your teeth if you have that situation running. It's probably worth cutting down as an experiment but you can't maintain a situation where the teeth are jiggling. This is something you have to experience for yourself. The feedback that you get from your neurological system, from your nerves, that is imperative. Feel it, understand it, and use that as a guide to pushing yourself forward on this situation. There are different types of retainers, of course, one of the classics is the Essex style retainer, the ones that look a bit like Invisalign retainers. There are clear aligners. They're just vacuum packed pieces of a food grade thermoplastic that are formed over the teeth. You put the flat in a machine, you heat them up and you vacuum it down. I use a machine that's got pressure because you can get more bars of pressure than you can get the same equivalent with vacuum. So, and I get a better formation on that. But it's essentially the same things. They're, they're various different sorts of vacuum. Um, retainer. They, they're very effective at holding the specific positions of the teeth. They don't tend to occupy any space in the roof of the mouth, so they occupy minimal tongue space. They do hold the teeth open a fraction. If you've got two of them, an upper one and a lower one, because they're going to meet in the back teeth first, the 
gape or jaw opening that you're going to generate could be as much as a millimetre on the front teeth sometimes, usually less. But that is significant. I worry about jaw joint problems in relation to that, but that's, by, that's another thing. The other types of retainers, let's say a Hawley retainer that's also very popular, this has a piece of plastic in the roof of the mouth and some wires that clip onto the teeth. And Hawley retainers don't hold the teeth apart, but they occupy a lot more tongue space on the roof of the mouth, particularly that space where you want to have your tongue. And then there's a multitude of different types of retainers of different shapes and forms. One interesting thing is were you to have a fixed retainer, one that goes behind the teeth, the front teeth, you would either have that behind the lower four, or six or eight lower front teeth or upper, usually I recommend only four teeth. If you go on the canines it, it doesn't tend to work a long time because you snap them off, there's so much force on the inside of the canine. So I would recommend having four on the upper teeth. One of the advantages of these retainers is they won't stop you whitening your own arches. So a good suggestion that I would have would be to ask your orthodontist or even a dentist who does orthodontics, that might be a better option, to place a fixed retainer instead of whatever retainer you have. Initially have a suck down retainer, an Essex style retainer made that goes over the top both for the top and the bottom, just to stabilize you for a short period of time. Then experiment not wearing the Essex retainer. Have those fixed retainers in your mouth. They'll keep the general alignment of the front teeth. And then really, really, really work on your oral posture and function. And one advantage of that uh, approach is that having something on the top front teeth is a reminder of where to place your tongue. Now that is often an advantage. Some people have complained to me that it cuts their tongue and causes sores on the tip of the tongue. Yep, yeah, I guess that slightly depends on how well done the fixed retainer is and how well finished and polished it is. But that would probably be my best piece of advice. You could just throw your retainer away and work exceptionally hard. But of course, that's a decision for you. It's not advice I'm giving you to do. That's, you take, you've got to take responsibility. If you decide to do that, you have to take responsibility for what you do. I highly advise you to take um, the measurement of the intermolar width, your intermolar width using the first molar, just feeling a dial caliper between those points. And that is another video we're planning on doing in the near future. But work hard and release yourself if you think you're ready to take responsibility for it.